Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ox Talks. It is Thursday, March 14th, 2024. Hope all of you are having a productive day today. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. To all the new subscribers that I've seen come over in the last uh, 24 hours or so, really appreciate you being here. It means a lot to me. Hope all of you will enjoy the content. I do welcome comments and interaction with the subscribers in this community. Uh, I do try to read those, respond to them as time permits. So once again, I know you have a lot of choices, things you can be watching, but I appreciate you taking the time. Please share these videos with family, friends, coworkers, colleagues, as many people as you can think of that have open ears and open eyes and want to understand, actually understand and not be in denial as to what is happening with this economy. And it is not looking good. So again, I want to extend a warm welcome to all the new subscribers. With that being said, I will get into a couple stories I have today to share with you. First was on CNBC, and it's the follow-on inflation report. The producer price index numbers were released this morning. I'll briefly share the data with you because it's important, because the costs of goods continue to rise. They more than doubled the expectations from what the Wall Street economists had predicted. And we are at the highest level now, going back to September 2023 in terms of the PPI increase. So we're going in the wrong direction. So all of those that are listening to the happy talk about inflation is under control, uh, this is going to be a soft landing. The Fed's going to be pivoting soon because the you know everything is uh, is is going down. Uh, inflation is fine. Nothing to see here. I hope that you dig a little deeper, understand uh, the the bill of goods that you're being sold by the mainstream media is simply not accurate. And again, the numbers I'm going to share with you are the government numbers. So we have to even take this with a grain of salt. It says the producer price index, which measures pipe line costs for raw, intermediate, and finished goods jumped 0.6%, 6%, excuse me, on the month. The Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics reported Thursday. That was higher than the three, excuse me, higher than the 0.3% forecast from Dow Jones and comes after a 0.3% increase in January. So they predicted 0.3%, they got 0.6, double. That's a 100% miss. And it also doubled from what it was in January, going in the wrong direction. It says, excluding food and energy, the core PPI accelerated by 0.3 compared with the estimate for a 0.2% increase. Another measure that also excludes trade services rose 0.4% compared with the 0.6% gain in January and was above the estimate for a 0.2% advance. It says, on a year-over-year -year basis, listen to this. The headline index increased 1.6%, the biggest move since September of 2023. So now we have to go back six or seven months to find the time when it increased at this rapid a pace. So we are not going in the direction of lower inflation. We're going in the direction of higher inflation, higher cost of everything, higher cost of goods, services, food, you name it. It says, the market focused on the PPI release, which comes two days after the consumer price index, which measures what consumers pay in the marketplace, showed that inflation was slightly higher than anticipated on a year-over-year -year basis. The PPI is considered a leading indicator, it says, for inflation as it indicates costs early on in the supply chain. The BLS reported that after that about two thirds of the rise in the headline producer price index, PPI came from a 1.2% surge in goods prices, the biggest increase since August of 2023. As with the CPI, the acceleration was traced to energy prices, which saw a 4.4% increase in the final demand measure. Gasoline prices jumped, it says, 6.8% at the wholesale level. So I'm not going to go too much more into the PPI report. CPI was hot. PPI was hot. We have to keep a watch on this. I'm sure we all are every day because we're paying more for food, uh, more to to fill up our tanks with gasoline, more to buy clothing for ourselves and our families. 
And the follow-on story I had to share with you deals with just, it captures just how badly Americans are hurting. I did a story on this a few months ago about the 401k hardship withdrawals. And this is the updated data now that we have. This is out of the Fox Business Today. And the article is entitled 401k hardship withdrawals surge to another record as inflation, high inflation stings. It says a record breaking number of Americans are making emergency withdrawals from their 401k retirement plans in order to cover a financial hardship amid the ongoing inflation crisis, according to new data from the Vanguard Group. Nearly 3.6% of workers participating in employer-sponsored 401k plans made so-called hardship withdrawal in 2023, according to Vanguard, which tracks about 5 million accounts. That marks a major increase from the 2.8% rate recorded in 2022 and the pre-pandemic average at just about 2%. And it's the, it marks the highest level since Vanguard, listen to this, since Vanguard began tracking the data in 2004. So Vanguard's been tracking the data on 401k emergency withdrawals for now 20 years, from 2004. This is the highest level a 401k emergency withdrawal since they started tracking the numbers. Think about that. A lot has happened uh, economically since 2004. We we're coming out of a bad economic situation in the early 2000s. We also had the great financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. And these numbers even rival that. It says hardship withdrawals allow workers to tap their 401k plans for, they call it, quote, immediate and heavy financial need. That must be the standard that's used. Individuals who make these types of withdrawals owe income tax, it says, on the money and could be hit with an early withdrawal fee if they are under the age of 59 and a half. However, it says this penalty can be waived if workers provide adequate evidence that the money is being used for a qualified hardship. One example of a qualified hardship, it says, is a medical expense. A person who takes a hardship withdrawal also Listen to this, cannot pay it back to their 401k and cannot roll that money into another retirement account. So the way I'm reading this, once you deplete that money from your retirement account, you cannot put it back. It, whether you use that money on the emergency and it's gone or not, whether you uh, all of a sudden you know, get another bonus at work and want to go put the money back, you cannot. So you will not have those funds there for retirement to draw down on when you get to that age. So, I mean, again, if you've been working for many years, your employer's been contributing, you've been contributing, now you're confronted with a situation, do I pull this money out? Is it worth it to deplete what I'm going to be living on down the road and supporting myself and, and my family to cover whatever this emergency is now? That takes uh, a very serious analysis, and we'll get into a situation that I want to talk about, which is the greatest reason why people are pulling out these these loans are taking the money from their 401k. It's shocking to me. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you, really analyze this before you pull the trigger uh, on depleting your retirement account, folks. Here's, here's the stat that blows me away. About 40%, it says, of individuals who dipped into their 401k last year did so, what reason do you think? To avoid foreclosure of their home. And that's up from about 36% in 2022, according to the report. Here's the problem. In my experience as a real estate lawyer, stuff comes across my desk all the time, where people are in foreclosure, they're looking for advice on what to do, different ways to strategize, to handle it. And the, the reality is, is many times what I'm seeing is people have been in foreclosure before. And they were, they were able to somehow you know, have the lender work with them to tack it on the end, or they were somehow able to go pull from some other resource to bring the loan current to get it out of default and to avoid the foreclosure. But so many of these people, once they do that, because they either don't have enough money to be, they don't make enough money to support their mortgage payments and all the other obligations they have, or their job was compromised, or they lost a job, or their hours were cut, uh, but in most instances, they're just overextended. 
And so they may solve that problem in an immediate term. And guess what? Six months down the road, nine months down the road, they find themselves right back in foreclosure. Another reason is because people's spending habits don't change. They don't learn from mistakes. They keep taking on debt that they can't afford to pay back. And other things like credit cards, auto loans, we've heard all this. So again, I'm not giving you legal advice or financial advice, but if you pull money out of your 401k, your retirement plan, it's there for your retirement, when you're gonna need it the most beyond your, your, your working years, to try to stave off or prevent a foreclosure of your home, you need to consider that very, very carefully. Are you just putting a Band-Aid on it? Are you just kicking the inevitable down the road? And does it make sense to do that? Get your own legal advice. Uh, talk to a good financial advisor if you're in this situation. It's so easy to, to, to sign that, sign for that withdrawal, get that money. And once it's gone, it's gone. If it's going to a bank to simply stave off a foreclosure, that money is gone. All you're doing is bringing it back to, to, to level and you have to continue to make service the debt that obviously you couldn't service or you wouldn't have been in the foreclosure in the first place. So this is, uh, this is scary. The 401k withdrawals are scary. It says high inflation has created severe financial pressures for most U.S. households. We know that which are forced to pay more for everyday necessities like food and rent. The burden is so disproportionately borne by low-income Americans, those already stretched paycheck, excuse me, already stretched paychecks are heavily affected by price fluctuations. Look, from my perspective, not financial advice, that's all the more reason. If you are in that lower income strata, but you're fortunate enough to have a retirement account, it's there. You, don't, you, you will have that down the road regardless of what happens unless you deplete it now, unless you go in there and pull it out. And boy, if you're pulling out 401k money, money from your retirement account to pay off credit card debt, it, from my personal perspective, that's even a riskier idea than doing it to save your house. Um, Anyway, so as, as they spend more on everyday goods, Americans are burning through their savings and are increasingly turning to credit cards to cover those basic expenses. We talked about the credit card uh, levels and the debt in this country. It is astronomical. In the three-month period from October to December, total credit card debt rose to $1.13 trillion, an increase of $50 billion or 4.6% from the previous quarter. According to the re report, it's the highest level on record in Fed data dating back to 2003 and the 10th consecutive annual increase. People's spending habits aren't changing. They're racking up credit cards on stupid stuff. Uh, and hopefully you have not fallen into that trap. Hopefully you are not servicing credit card debt at 21, 22, 23% interest. If you are, there's, there's, there's no, it's not always lost but you have to change those habits now. You've got to find a way to pay down that debt and most importantly, stop taking out new debt that you can't afford to repay. We know auto loan uh, repossessions are, at, 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 are surging as well. So again, it, it's not great news, but it's, it's reality. And I want to share that with you today, whether it applies to you or not. It might, may apply to a family member uh, or someone else that you care about that's, that's looking at this and trying to make this difficult decision to whether or not they will really rob from Peter to pay Paul, so to speak. All right. With that being said, hope all of you are going to go get your workout in today or at least get some steps in, do half an hour of cardio get some walking done, some strength training, important. And of course, talk about the diet. I hate to use the word diet. It's just smart eating habits. Uh, be careful. It's calories in, calories out, guys. You've got to have a smart eating plan, something that's sustainable that you're going to stick with in connection with a smart exercise pr uh, program. We need to be a more physically fit nation. Uh, we are unhealthy and uh, it, you know it, it, it's going to catch up with us. It already is. It overburdens the healthcare system with the obesity pandemic we have with our young, with our uh, younger uh, generations as well. So we've got to find a way to pull, pull ourselves out of this. It starts with you. It starts with me. Set a good example. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Have a great rest of your day and evening. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.